excited to show you what is new with Disco 2.0. There are many changes and additions that we've made based on your feedback, but the biggest change has been Time Warp. And Time Warp is a way to incorporate business days and business hours into your process mining analysis. And I want to show you how this works based on an example. So let's open this data set. This is a credit application process data set from a bank. And we have a case ID, we have an activity, we have one timestamp. And once we import the data, the process is being mined and the process map is being created based on the data. So we can see what actually happened. And the process isn't too complicated. So let's pull up all the sliders to look at all the activities and all the paths to see all the details in this process. And what we can see is, if we zoom in a little bit, is that the process starts by the customer handing in the application either through the online portal or directly by directly calling the call center. Then very quickly the bank tries to send them um, an initial offer. So they do a certain pre-approval step and then in the very end the actual credit check takes place. So maybe additional information needs to be requested from the customer and then an in, in, in a decision is being made, right? So either the loan is being approved or it's being rejected or the customer cancels themselves. So what happens in this process is that we actually have different SLAs, service level agreements for different phases of the process. And let's first focus on the last phase of the process, the actual credit application part. And the credit application part starts with the credit check activity and is taking place in the back office of the bank. So what we can do is we can add a filter to focus on the second phase of the process and we can use the endpoints filter for that. We can say that we want to look at the process after the credit check. So we only keep everything that happens after the credit check and we, we can call this the credit application part of the process. Um, and what we can also do is that we can apply the filters permanently to create a new baseline for this analysis. So once we do that, we will only see the second phase of the process um, in more detail. And now we can analyze our SLA. And the SLA that we have for this part of the process is that the whole process phase, this part of the process, should be finished within three business days. Now, if we look at the statistics, we can look at the case durations, we can see the statistics around it. Um, we can look at, for example, the average case duration is 4.9 days, the median case duration is 3.2 days, but this is all based on calendar days, right? So what we can do already is we can add a performance filter to focus on our SLA. So let's take a look at how we would normally do that. We can use the performance filter, we can set our SLA boundary, for example, in this case it's three days, and then in the blue area, for example, in this case, we are focusing on all cases or all applications that take more than three days. And we can save this as a separate analysis. So for example, let's call this SLA larger than three days. Uh, so we save this as an analysis in our data set. And we can see the percentage of cases that are falling outside of our SLA. And appears to be that there are 53 cases that take longer than three days. But what we have to keep in mind is that at the moment, we're still looking at this data set based on calendar days, while our SLA is actually based on business days. And this means that if a credit check was performed on Friday and then additional information needs to be requested the next week, there's a weekend in between, then this weekend is being counted, but it shouldn't be counted because we're looking at our process. We want to look at our process in business days. And that is something that wasn't previously possible and there's no easy way around it actually. If you have SLAs in business days, then there's no easy way with process mining to do this. You have to do some 
data pre-processing typically this involves programming and you're losing all the flexibility that you get with process mining now with disco 2.0 you get the possibility to incorporate business days into your analysis in a very easy way uh, through time warp so the time warp logo and the time warp functionality you can find it here in the lower left corner of the application once you click on the time warp symbol you can enable time warp and it brings up a timetable and this is a timetable of the week and per default there's um, a working day set from Monday to Friday and Saturday and Saturday are off and Saturday and Sunday are off but you can change that depending on your own process and what we want to do with this credit application part right now is we just want to focus on business days and we can actually change the configuration for all of the days at once by changing through drag and drop the Monday um, yeah, the Monday timetable. So in this case, what we will do is we will pull up um, the timetable settings for all the weekdays from midnight to midnight because we want to include all of the working days as a full day, but we do not want to count the Saturdays and Sundays, the weekends, for our analysis. And so to compare it in an easier way, we can save this as a separate analysis and let's call this SLA larger than three days in business days so we can see what a difference it makes compared to the initial analysis and what we can see is that it's quite significant because now we're down to 41% of cases that are outside of our SLA and if we compare this to the previous analysis which was 53% that is um, more of a 10% change right so in reality there are just 41% of the cases that are outside of our SLA whereas initially it looked like 53% um, of them were outside of three business days. So there were a lot of false positives in our in initial analysis. And this is because we were counting the weekends when we shouldn't count the weekends. So what this shows you is that time warp enables you to incorporate business days in such a way that you get more meaningful results that all of the deviations that you get for your SLA analysis are actually actual deviations so you don't have those false positives and you can give more meaningful results to the process owners and this will enable a better root cause analysis for what's actually going wrong. Now actually we're not quite there yet because we did exclude the weekends which shouldn't be counted but there are also holidays so sometimes there are public holidays that should also not be counted because they're also not working days and we can easily incorporate this with time warp as well so if we go back to the time warp settings we can see that currently Saturdays and Sundays are off but we can add holidays by clicking on the bank holidays symbol here in the lower right corner and what we can then do is we can find the country where our process took place. In our case, this was the Netherlands. So we select the Netherlands as the country uh, we want to include. And then we automatically get all the public holidays that are falling into the time frame for our data set. So in this case, the data set goes from early 2012 to mid 2012. And we can see that there are some holidays like Easter, um, holidays that took place in this time frame and if you have some additional holidays or free days that you don't want to count you can easily incorporate them by manually adding or removing holidays in this way for example maybe there's a public holiday that was actually a working day for your organization you can change that or maybe there was an additional day that was a non-working day for your organization you can add this one as well but for our situation we are fine with just the the regular holidays and we again save this as a separate analysis so we can s compare it in an easier way let's just call it business day minus holidays and we can see what changes so 
there's a small change compared to the previous data sets. So now we are down to 40% of the cases outside of the SLA. Uh, so if we look at the previous one compared to instead of 2,347 cases or applications that were outside of the SLA. In fact, if we incorporate the holidays as well, there were just 2,270. So this is now the true number of cases that are outside of our SLA and it allows us to incorporate the business days and holidays in a very easy manner. Now, the second example that I want to show you involves uh, working hours. So sometimes it's not just the business days and holidays that we want to exclude, but we also want to take the actual time of the day that people work into account. And this is actually relevant if we go back to the full process from the beginning. This is relevant for the front office part of the process because in the front office part, uh, we have a call center that has very different working hours and also very different SLAs from the back office part. And like before, let's focus on this front office part separately. So what we will do is we will add a filter. And again, we add an endpoint filter. And in this case, we will focus on the process until the offer was sent. So that was, that is the cutoff part that we want to use for this part of the, the process. And let's call it front office part. And again, we will take this as a new baseline for our analysis for the front office. So now we are focusing on this first part of the process. And if we look at the statistics and the case durations, then we can see that it's relatively fast. So it's just a few hours actually that this part of the process normally takes, right? So the mean case duration is 32.7 hours. The median is 19.6 hours. And if we go to the performance view, for example, we can look at the median duration here. Then we see that on average, it takes 29 hours um, between the call and the pre-approval steps in the process. But the point is, like before, so this is actually um, the times, these are the, the average durations in the process based on calendar days. And the SLA also for this part of the process is based on working hours. So there's an SLA that says that between the call and the initial offer sent to the customer, it shouldn't take longer than eight hours. But this is eight business hours or working hours and not calendar hours. And so the team in the front office works from 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. on uh, weekdays. And they also work on Saturday a little bit differently. They work from 8 till 6 p.m., uh, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. On, on Saturdays. They don't work on Sundays, but they don't work from 9 p.m. Uh, on a weekday until, for example, 7 a.m. the next weekday. So the time that they are not working should not be counted. And so what we can do to take that into account is again, we can click on the time warp symbol to enable the time warp settings. And we can set the, the, the settings in such a way to reflect the actual hours um, that the team works. So it's from 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. on Monday, to Friday, Monday through Friday. And then we can also enable the Saturday. And on Saturday, they work from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. They don't work on Sundays. So this is now the specific timetable that the front office, the calls and the team works on. And what we want to do is that we only count the actual time within their working time for the SLA. And we don't want to count the time after 9 p.m., for example, between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. of the next day. That wouldn't be fair, right? And that's not how the SLA has been defined. So we want to match our analysis to the way that the SLA is being measured. So what we can do again is to compare this. Um, we can save this as a separate analysis. Let's say front office part um, business hours. 
And once we create this, we can see that the time changes actually. So now, rather than on average 29 hours, it just takes on average 14 hours because now we're just taking the business hours into account. And this is now the, the right basis for us to perform our SLA analysis because the SLA says that be between the call with the customer and the initial offer, there shouldn't be more than eight business hours. So what we can do is we can simply click on this path and then we can say filter this path to use the shortcut and we can create an additional time constraint. So for example, here we can say time between matching events must be longer than, and then we want to say eight hours. So again, we want to find all the cases that are falling outside of our SLA. So that take longer than eight hours. And we can do that um, by applying this filter, which says between the call and the pre-approval, uh, all the cases that take longer than eight hours. And so we do this and we can again save this as a separate analysis. We say SLA larger than eight hours for the front office part. And what we get is the right percentage. Now it's 46% of the cases that take longer than eight hours between the call activity and the pre-approval step in the process. And so this is the right percentage because we have already incorporated the right business hour definition for our process. If we wouldn't do that, we would, similar to the example before, with the back office part, we would get a lot of false positives. So the percentage would be higher than it actually is because it would include applications or calls that came in, for example, um, late in the evening before 9 p.m., they were picked up in the next morning immediately, but they might appear to take longer than eight hours. Well, in fact, in terms of business hours, they didn't. So we can we can see that actually, if we would uh, remove the time warp instead of 46%, uh, we see that the percentage goes back to 56%. So 10% higher than the actual percentage, which again is a lot of false positives. So I hope this gives you an overview about how you can work with Time Warp and perform your analysis for your post mining analysis uh, and your post mining performance analysis based on SLAs in the true way, based on the actual business day and working hour SLAs that you have defined for your process and it, that it's very easy to do. So all you have to do for your data set is to define the right definition of what your business days are, what perhaps the holidays are in your region, and if you want to define a working hour uh, timetable as well. And then Disco automatically will take care of the rest and will show you all the performance metrics and all the filters will work automatically based on this um, new business hour or business day uh, definition. Okay, so I, I hope this gives you a good overview. Um, we would love to hear from you, to hear what you think about Disco at 2.0 and Time Warp, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.